Welcome back, my Jeep friends. This video is going to be one of three videos where we're talking about the aux beam switch controller. Okay, so we're going to make three videos. The very first one's going to be on how this aux beam switch controller works. And so that's just if you've never installed one of these, how that works with the switch control, with the breaker, and how to run the wires, and how it all just ties together. And once you understand that, this system's real easy. So that's going to be the first video in the series. The second video is going to be how I routed all the wires in this particular 2015 JK and how I mounted everything, where I ran the wires, where I mounted the switch control, where I went, mounted the fuse box, how I mounted all that, and uh, where I put the screws in and what screws I had to use and where it's safe to put screws and how I took the panels off and all that. So that's going to be video number two. The third video is just going to be a short video of the aux beam in use. So we have this roof rack on here. That's another video on my channel. If you haven't seen that, check that out. There are lights all around that thing. I don't know how I haven't counted them all, but there's a bunch of lights on it all the way around. And that is super nice when we're airing up in the dark at the end of the day or we're cooking a meal at the end of the day and it's dark. That is really, really nice. So that's really paid off. And uh, that third video is going to be about just a short video about those lights in use. If you're not watching these in series or you missed the other two videos, the other two videos in this series will pop up as links at the end of this video. So look for those. Okay guys, you know, when I was looking at buying this switch controller for my Jeep and this aux beam brand is what my buddy had bought and he was telling me about it and I just couldn't wrap my head around it, honestly. I couldn't, you know, I've done my own wiring all my life in dirt bikes and boats and Jeeps and trailers and blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on and I, pretty much know what I'm doing. I'm not an expert. I'm not a mechanic, but I'm going to show you basically how this is laid out uh, and what worked for me. So, and I wish I'd seen a video like this because I've seen a, watch a lot of installation videos. Yeah, I put this here and put that there, but I really still couldn't wrap my head around how they, everything interact with, interacted with each other. So I'm going to help you with that today. So if you don't understand this, this will be a good video for you. So, you know, in the old days, in the eighties, when I would, <laughs> that's how old I am, uh, when I'd wire something on my truck, you know, I would take positive wire, of course, you could run the positive wire directly to your light, right? This is just a cheap $6 eBay light and run it directly there and run the negative directly there. There's no fuse, there's no nothing, there's no switch and it would turn on. Problem is it would turn on all the time until your battery was dead, right? So you got to put a switch in. So I'd run a switch from here, positive into the uh, wire from here into the cab to a switch and then off the switch, it would come back to the positive wire and then the negative wire, of course, I'd run back to the battery and clip it there. I only had like two KC lights, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But nowadays we got lights everywhere, right? We got rock lights on the bottom. We got side lights. We got lights on the back so we can see what we're doing in the back of the Jeep. We got not just one couple lights in the front. We got lights on the roof and lights on the brush guard. We've got lights everywhere. And then some people are using this for their compressor as well and for other things. So um, this thing will give you a lot of opportunity to really make your rig really cool and useful. So basically there's three main components, at least this, and I think all these are probably pretty similar, but at least this aux beam comes with three main components. There's a 60 amp breaker, and I'm going to show you about all these in more detail in a little bit. This is the switch panel, what I call the switch panel. I don't remember what aux beam calls it, but it's a panel that has switches on it. So that's what I call it. This is what goes inside your vehicle. We're going to set that up here like it's inside the cab. Okay. And then this is called the switch assembly, which that confuses me, switch panel, switch assembly, and I get confused because I'm easily confused. So I call this the fuse box, okay? So that's what we're gonna call this today, the fuse box, why? Because there's a bunch of fuses in it and it's a box. And this lives uh, here. Now you can let, set this up any way you want. This doesn't matter where you put these necessarily in your vehicle. Obviously that goes inside the vehicle. This can go under the hood though. This could also go inside the vehicle, but it doesn't matter too much. You're limited if you're just using the existing wiring that they send. The power wire is very short. And so you're limited where you can put this, at least if you're in a JK where you don't have much underhood room, um, that doesn't leave you many options. And maybe other vehicles are the same. So you might have to make longer cables. But uh, what this purpose is to do is just to show you how these things interact with each other so that you can understand, once you understand this, you can literally, oh, I can put this anywhere. And uh, you just have to make the wires longer or shorter or whatever you need to do. Okay, first things first, this has to have a power source. You can see there's a lot of breakers in here and some of them up to 30 amps. So this is a, has a lot of juice, should have a lot of juice going to it, okay? So that's got to come directly from the battery. So the power wire off your battery, sorry, it's not red, I know it's pink, comes off here, has to go through the breaker, okay? And then it goes from the breaker down here to the power 
positive power pole here and that's red right there and uh, you just run the wires up through here and then once they're up through here inside the box they'll come over here and you have to run them up inside just because the way the box closes like that that's the only access all right so that's the main power wire problem is you're running this wire across your vehicle that's going to have vibration it's going to potentially chafe and if it's against a piece of metal, that'll cut right through it. Now all of a sudden, your vehicle's shorted out and there's massive amounts of power going to that short. It can cause sparks, it can cause a fire, your vehicle can burn down. Okay, so this is, take this very seriously. And so that's why they send this breaker here. This is a 60 amp breaker, you can see that right there. And what this breaker does, has a nice little protective cover to keep it clean and keep it safe. And this has to go in line of that main power wire going here. You want it as close to your battery as possible because any wire between your positive post and this breaker is not protected. So even this little piece of wire i have a short piece of wire going from here to my breaker it's wrapped in wire loom i'd wish i'd wrapped it in something even heavier because i just don't want it you want to make sure it's not against the firewall where it's going to chafe against maybe a piece of metal or a screw sticking out so you got to protect this piece especially especially okay and so it's just a regular breaker kind of like you have in your house you can trip it and of course that cuts the power now the switch is open which means it won't conduct current and so if you close the switch that means the switch is closed and it'll allow current to go through okay and you can manually trip it there but if it senses anything over 60 amps it'll trip bam and so if suddenly you're not getting power to your aux beam that could be the problem now this breaker goes in line has little posts right here and little nuts and lock washers make sure you get those nice and snug and protect them and so one wire can come in here one wire goes out here so how far are you running and how many amps are you going to go through your wire that's what you have to figure out um, it's already kind of pre-built in with these distances right here. But if you're going longer, like I did, you need to look at a wire sizing chart based on, that'll tell you how, if, how many amps you're pulling through it, how big it needs to be. Okay, so I had to go with, uh, I think, a little bit bigger wire that I used and because uh, I was going a little bit further. So be sure to check those charts. You don't want to screw that up. So you can run that same gauge wire back as your ground wire along the red wire and just bring it over to your ground. But because this is on one side of my Jeep, this is on passenger, this is on the driver's side, I just ran my power, my ground wire off of here. And so I ran the ground wire off here and I ran it to a little bolt that's right here on the inner part of the fender. And it's a pretty heavy duty bolt. It looks like it's a grounding point anyway. So I just ran it right there. It's a really short one. I think I even shortened this cable and because this ground cable was well, pl plenty long for that. So that's how I grounded it. So those are the two big wires that you're going to use. Now, wherever you mount this, you're going to have to think about where you're going to ground it. Are you going to run it back to your battery, which you can do, or you can ground it to the frame. Just make sure that's a nice, solid, good connection. So now we have DC current coming to this all the time, but we don't want this on all the time, right? You don't want this lit up in your cab 24 seven because your battery will go dead. And so what they built in is a little switch that's built into here. So when you turn your key on, um, it powers this and allows power to go through to these connections that are going to go to your lights. So that's real simple. All it is, it's a wire that goes from your fuse box across here. Of course, you can run it anywhere you want. I actually ran mine back against the firewall, along the firewall, and then back down to here. I'm just showing you directly across here so you can see how these are connected. Bring it in here. It comes up here. And so when you turn your key on, we were going to pick a particular fuse, like an accessory fuse. And this M6 fuse is the fuse I chose. So when you turn on the accessory, just one click, it's not powering your instruments and turning on the air conditioning and the radio, or not everything anyway. It turns on some things, but not all the things like the engine run position. So just one click and uh, it powers this and allows me to turn on my lights all around my Jeep, um, which is nice. And so here's the wire that comes with it. This is, and of course I had to make it longer. This wasn't long enough to reach all the way around my Jeep. And I think it's a six or it's probably an 18 gauge. I don't know. I think I extended it with 16 gauge, but it's got this little two pin connector right there. Okay. And then that little two pin connector goes on that. See the two pins right there. All right. So we're going to put this together like this and it just snaps in place. Click. That's it. Now make sure you run the wire down through here and you can see I what didn't have foresight because you don't want to be running 10 feet of wire. However it is through this. It's easier to run it the other way, right? Okay, but that's how it's going to look. And then when you close your box on it, end up there, the wire is going to come out the bottom there, all right? And it's protected. Okay, good. Now, this will sit right here. Then this runs over here to your fuse box. Now, how you connect this to your fuse box is you use one of these fuse taps. And this came with the aux beam. And these are kind of cool. I've used these in the past. And so this allows you to take an existing fuse out. We're going to take that accessory fuse out. In, in my case, we took the accessory fuse out and uh, we put this uh, in place. Now that accessory fuse, we drop in right there in that open slot. See those open slots right there? 
So that's what the accessory fuse does. It drops in there and that still allows it to be its fuse and do its own thing for its own circuit. Okay. But so the power will come in one side and go through that fuse and go down the other side and it'll still pop, you know, it'll still melt if it gets too much of a draw. So that'll still work. But we've tapped into this power one, but now the power wire comes up, it comes through here, goes through the fuse and uh, comes out this way. And now you take this wire and this wire, and of course this isn't enough wire to really crimp this, but they give you a little crimp that you can slide this together here and uh, crimp it on there. And now you've got a fuse tap. So what this does is of course, when you turn your key on, that allows current to flow through here. And that tells a switch in here to close. And that allows power to go to these wire connections here. Okay, next we're gonna talk about the switch panel. And uh, so this allows you to, you know, activate any eight of these right here with any of these switches. Okay, cool. So this little cable that comes out here has a little pigtail, little four pin hole there. What I don't have to show you is the cable, the actual cable that goes from here to here. But all that cable does is it comes from the switch panel, comes down through here. And of course you're gonna route it up through here and it goes to this four pin connector right here. Okay, real simple, you just plug that in and that's done. That's how easy that is. Okay, mounting that takes a little bit more time. I'll show you in the Jeep where I mounted that. But basically, that's the setup. Okay, and very last thing, now it's time to do the fun stuff, attach the lights. So I've just got this cheap $6 eBay light here and it's got a positive and a negative. And so what you'll do is you'll take, you know, have to decide which of these go where and which is drawing the most amps. I'll show you how I'm doing that as well. And let's just say we're gonna run two of these lights that are about an amp or two a piece. I can't remember, they're not very much, but two of these can go on one of these five amp breakers easy. So we're just gonna unscrew the little screw there, back it off, that lifts the plate and you're gonna slide the wire in there, of course, and then tighten it down. Positive, positive, negative, negative, real simple, right? And then the last thing of course is, or almost last thing is figuring out where to mount this. We'll talk about some options and some pros and cons and some thinking that I put behind where I mounted mine. And maybe that'll help you with your vehicle. And also these lights, how many lights are you gonna put on? You think, oh, I just need these. But then you're like later, oh, I need these lights. And no, I need these lights over here. And these LED lights are cheap, they're robust, they last a long time. And even if they do break or go off, you know, it's no big deal, it's not, they're not hard to change. Especially when you have this, and you're not running wiring from here all the way back into your cab and you have multiple switches in your cab and you're like, this light does this, this does this light, this da 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 da. This is really clean and looks real professional and I just love it.